Hey guys, today Tommy, who's behind the camera, and myself are test driving the Polestar 2. And we really are test driving it because, as you know, Polestar does not have any dealerships, do they, Tommy? No, apparently they have pop-up, what is it, pop-up stores, pop-up studios? Exactly, that's what they have. So let's talk about the history of Polestar, then we'll talk about how we got this car, and then we'll take it for a ride. So Polestar, as you know, Tommy, used to be kind of the performance brand of Volvo, uh, kind of like AMG is for Mercedes, or M is for BMW, and before then it was its own thing, really. It was a kind of a racing team. But Volvo decided to spin off Polestar and make it its own brand by introducing the Polestar 1, which is this very expensive hybrid. Now the Polestar 2, which is behind me, is an all-electric car that competes with cars like the Tesla Model 3 and, of course, the upcoming Volkswagen ID4, ID3. Uh, and uh, because we really didn't have a chance to test drive it as a press uh, organization, I basically called uh, Polestar and I said, hey, if I want to buy this car, how would I go about looking at it since you don't have any dealerships? And they said, no worries. You can go online and you can schedule the car to be brought to your home or office for a half hour test drive. And that is exactly what happened. So Tommy, you wanna give him a walk around of the car? Yeah, so a nice gentleman just dropped it off and we're going to do our quick and dirty first look at the Polestar 2. Now Polestar 2, as uh, my dad mentioned, is, you know, Model 3 competitor. It's an interesting design, very angular. And even though the side profile looks like a sedan, it's actually a hatchback. So the whole rear of the vehicle will lift up. Come on, lift up. There's a button here. There we go. There you go. Yeah, so that lifts up like that. And then let me show you some of the cool things it does. You want to move the little cleaning tray there? Yep, we'll do. Okay, so I believe this actually folds down, which it does. And then the whole floor lifts up and you can prop it open using this little rod. And look how deep it is down there. So you've got some good storage underneath. So even though this isn't a crossover like the, the trend is going with vehicles like the Mustang Mach-E and the Model Y, it still has a surprising amount of storage capacity. Yeah, check it out. It even has a ski pass-through. Yeah, ski pass-through. And I think the seats fold down. We're learning so much about this car in such a short period of time because we've never we've never had our hands on one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Hi, they do fold down. Okay, let's, uh, let's lower the trunk. I think it's just a click of the button here. What do you think of the... Um, overall looks of the Polestar. It's a, uh, oh, I like this. See that? I think that's a nice touch, how it's got the wraparound like it. taillight. It's uh, very clean, it's very angular, it's very muscular, but does it have a frunk? Let's find out. I'm gonna pop it open. So I think there's a little latch down here. He showed us. There it is. Well, it kind of has a frunk. It's not too deep, to be honest with you, but it, um, it's got, it's got some space there. Does it go further? Yes, it lifts up. Oh yeah, look, we've got our uh, tire inflation kit. Now this is a cool thing. I love that they're doing this. Here we have the included charge connector. So this is J1772. Uh, and then this is a neat part. The connector actually comes with two different dongles. So we've got 120 volt, but we also have a 240 volt dongle. So if you've got a, uh, like a dryer plug at home, you can charge up the Polestar much quicker than you can off 120 and it's all included with the car which is nice and look like a bmw you've really got now two anchor points so if you're flying down the autobahn the hood does not come flying up now in terms of pricing uh this model costs uh, fifty nine thousand dollars uh as configured uh but you can get a performance model which is what five thousand dollars more and it's got some really cool olin shocks right tommy yeah it also has uh like Rambo brakes, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but uh, basically 60K. And uh, the reason I think, um, and this is not something that is official, but in my opinion, Volvo basically spun off Polestar was to get that federal tax credit in America uh, for electric vehicles. So if you buy this, you get a $7,500 federal tax credit. Uh, and then in Colorado, you would get an additional two and a half thousand if you qualify. So basically $9,000 off the cost of the $59,000 vehicle. Well, let's head inside because the wind is starting to pick up. Hang on, the wind's picking up, Dad. We're, we're not going to be able to hear ourselves anymore. So this is neat. This is the full vegan interior, and it's interesting. It almost feels like a neoprene. It's not a cloth. It's not a leather. Um, but if you do want, there, I guess there's a perforated leather package, which adds like 86 pounds to the total weight of the car. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, Volvo has always been very environmentally conscious, and so it makes sense that this material is very different. Very similar to a Tesla, you've got a very big glass roof that does not open, unfortunately. And show them this little cool feature. Yeah, you can it's, see it. it's like the little North Stars, this little projection from this extrusion. Which is what Polestar is in 
uh, Swedish, North Star. Uh, so uh, inside here, you've got, you know, very Tesla-like iPad screen, uh, which if you hit the home button, uh, takes you to uh, four different little tiles, right? Yeah, that's right. So you've right. got maps, you've got your connected phone, you've got your driver performance, and you've got your radio controls. You've got audio here, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so this is all Android-based, right? Yes. And the cool thing, too, is I think it's better than the... Uh, current Volvo systems I've used. So here we have different car screens so you can change the steering feel. We have driver assistance. We also have charge modes. You can set the charging limit by dragging here. What does the more screen do? Oh, okay, so it's like more settings. These four tiles looks like we have uh, more apps we can play with there. And then if you ever get lost, you just push the home button like this, swipe up for the climate control, and you can see uh, if we turn the car on, we could, uh, uh, you know, adjust the climate control and the re rear defrost circulation. And I do like this. Where is the power button? I just turn it on by putting it in the drive. Really? There's no power button? There's no power button, just like a Tesla. I like this too. Look, ready? Yeah. So you click this, and that's how you control where the air flows. That's really neat. I like that a lot. I think this is good. I mean, I've literally just got in it for the first time, but it seems pretty user-friendly. And what do you think of the instrument cluster? Yeah, you've got different functionality, and I can kind of zip through here. It's over here. I think it should be on this side. Yeah, there you go. Well. There you go. There's your kind of Google Maps uh, version of your, uh, you know, fully configurable instrument panel. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. You know, this feels very Android-like. So if you're used to an Android, I think this will feel natural to you. Uh, in terms of seating position and seating comfort, um, it's comfortable. You know, I've always thought that Volvo's Tommy have had the best seats in the car biz. Uh, and I would say there's no exception with this one. The seats are comfortable. I love the fact that this material is something that you don't see in every other car. Uh, I also love kind of the clean and almost minimalistic approach. Once again, it's very similar to a Tesla. You do have charging pans here for your phone uh, and a boatload of airbags, including ones on this side, which is really odd. One thing I don't like, though, yeah. the cup holder situation. It's weird. So that's going to be hard to rest your arm and use a cup holder. And then the second one's actually under the armrest. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we like our big drinks, right? Our Starbucks or our big gulps. Uh, and uh, it seems that these guys have um, neglected to put more than one accessible cup holder in there, which is a shame. I think it's a great interior, though. It is a good interior. Uh, now let's talk about charging. Uh, Polestar says, what, it can charge up to 150 kilowatts? Fast charging? Um, Potentially. You're, you're, you're Googling it. Yeah, I don't I don't actually know what the, the peak charge rate is. So it has a 78 kilowatt hour battery. Yep. Um, Which is similar to a Tesla Model 3. I think it's 150, 150 kilowatts. But good God, you're probably never going to get that. You know, in our testing, we have very rarely gotten the that peak, kind of yeah, quick peak charging. charging. Um, so should we take it for a ride? Yeah, so let me kind of talk about some of the specs here. Okay. 78 kilowatt hours. 233 miles of range according to the uh, EPA. Yep. Which is which is pretty good, pretty 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 normal. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, a Tesla Model 3 will now go over 300 miles of range. So, uh you, I take those numbers with a grain of salt because unlike gasoline powered cars, weather especially here in Colorado really affects range and the colder it gets, the more range you lose. So, uh like on a day like this when it's uh, I don't know where my temperature control is. My temperature is, but you know, when it's like in the 50s and 40s, oh, there it is, 45 degrees, you're probably going to get less range, realistically. Now, it has dual motors. Yep, all wheel uh, drive. The total combined output is 408 horsepower, but close to 500 pound feet of torque, I believe, which is a, a, a big number. And it uh, has regenerative braking, yeah, so it's, it's got one footed driving. I think I can control that here. So you have one pedal drive off low standard and then i love this my favorite feature so far is you can turn creep off and on so uh if you're used to it in automatic you can turn it on but you don't have to have it on interesting turn signal uh it, it's coming out of the speaker i think it's a little like a clax that comes out of the speaker i think this one has the harman kardon audio too it does it almost sounds like somebody's knocking on the windscreen you know all right i'm gonna uh, pull up here i'm gonna give it the beans so you ready yep ready all right here we go just up to the speed limit before this truck comes Whoa! Yeah, that's about five seconds. You can tell now. The, officially, it's what, four seven, something like that? Yeah, and just under five. Uh, it's quick. Yeah, it's definitely quick. Uh, and that's what makes driving electric cars fun, right? It's lots of oogles of instant torque. Uh, in terms of its kind of driving dynamic, it's really buttoned down. Uh, you know, Volvo has always done a good job in kind of cutting the line between doing, you know, super sporty cars like you would see 
on the Autobahn, right, where they're so taunted that it knocks your teeth out when you hit a bump. Um, you know, to the other end of the spectrum being American car ride where it's so floaty and gentle that you feel like, you know, you're gonna go careening off the road if you take a turn too quickly. If you think about that, you know, the tires squealing from all those 70 car rides. And Volvo's always kind of been in the middle and this, this car is no different. It does really well. Uh, I like the driving dynamics. I kind of wish um, they had done more uh, SUV and less sedan. I know this kind of cuts the difference. It's more like a Tesla Model Y, but I still would have loved to see it, you know, a little bit more space in here, a little bit more headroom. Well, good news. Yeah. You can get one with more headroom and you more can. space. Yeah. yeah. What's that? It's called the XC40 Recharge. So the uh, Volvo XC40 Recharge is an all electric crossover. And I believe underneath they're pretty much identical in terms of their tech and their uh, their construction. Um, so if you want one with more space, obviously it doesn't have the Polestar name. It's got a Volvo badge on the front of it. The XC40 Recharge may not be a bad option. I do like this. So the Model 3 has these weird vents that you control through the center. This has more traditional vents and the best thing so far on the interior compared to the Model 3 or Model Y. Look at that, a proper volume knob. Yeah, what do you think of like the edgeless glass both here and for the first time I've ever seen it out on the rear view oh, mirror? Oh, on the mirrors, look at that. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. They took it to the next level with that kind of new rear view mirror design. Um, I also like the fact that, you know, you feel like you're sitting in a car that is worth $60,000. There is a sense that this is, you know, uh, understated elegance done in a very environmentally conscious way. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's kind of the vibe that the car gives me when I'm sitting here at the stoplight. Do we have cameras? Let's see what the camera's situation is like. Oops. Oh, let's see what the cameras are like. So that's rear. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got auto brake in the back. I think there's a 360 too, right? Yep. Ah! Look at that. It seems to work pretty well. Yeah, there's a truck next to us. It's uh, a little distorted in the back here. You can see that some, some of the color variations are a little weird. But uh, can you click? Yeah, you can click to see the individual cameras. That's pretty cool. This is a not a bad system, Dad. I mean, you know, we just hopped in it. And if we're kind of getting the gist of it this quickly, it's doing something right. Yeah, I agree. I think it's relatively straightforward. You know, uh, the other manufacturers have all been coming up with different infotainment systems, some more successfully than others. I think, like, Uconnect is really good. We just did a podcast on that. If you're interested, check out our TFL Talk channel. Uh, and I put Volvo in there as one of the uh, better ones. The Volvo system is a little bit more, uh, you know, swipey. So you swipe left or right. But uh, uh, I liked it when it first came out. Now it's getting dated. This feels like an updated version of that to some extent. I agree. And I really like the gauge cluster design. I think that's really cool. Uh, it's clean, it's minimalist. You have your driver assistance down there. You've got your range, your power indicators. Here we go, one more time. One more. Ah, I love that, dude. I love that. I not, would Not quite like, uh, you know, tunnel vision inducing like a Tesla Model Y performance that we have, but nevertheless, fast enough and quick enough to make driving fun. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not quite as violent on initial launch as even the, the dual motor Model 3, but it still is, uh, more than adequate. I mean, that, that is a serious amount of power. Do you like this thing? Do you like the the little pass-through shifter? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the fact that it actually is a physical shifter that moves back and forth instead of a rotary knob or a push-button transmission. I'm really starting to hate those. If I'm completely honest. I just like the fact that this is, you know, like it's a newer version of the shifter, but it one that you know, rhymes with the old ones, doesn't necessarily try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the other thing I would say is, you know, I was really wondering how they would sell these cars since they're not opening any dealerships, right? Right. And in certain cities, uh, they will have like little pop-up studios, uh, but in the major cities, they will, like they did today, bring it to your door uh, with a specialist who walks you through it, and then you go for, you know, a test drive, and then you can, I guess, purchase it right away. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's how it works. And then he was saying, that if you need it to be fixed, you bring it to a certified Volvo dealer, right? Yeah, because there's no Polestar dealer. Yep, and they're gonna they're gonna get it fixed for you. So it sounds like you go to, you can order it, and then they bring it to you. Is that right? And then and then you can get it fixed at a Volvo dealer. Is that kind of the gist? Yeah, and then of course it does over the year updates. So ideally, you would never have to bring it to a dealership because well, let's face it, uh, electric cars uh, don't necessarily have a lot of. Uh, uh, things that go wrong with them. They don't have a lot of fluids that need to be changed, right? They're basically cars that uh, uh, are relatively, compared to traditional cars, uh, service-free. Uh, so let's get out and uh, let's give them one more walk around and kind of give up, give them our uh, final impressions of the new Polestar 2. Absolutely. Let's no hit it. Button, Tommy. Just, you know, yeah, just I like that. That's cool. There's no power button. You don't really need one. Let's check out the back seat here just real quick. Yeah. 
sitting behind myself where I drive, and this is where it gets a little tight, right? You can, yeah, you don't fit very well there. Yeah, I don't fit very. This is what I was saying. I would have loved to see, you know, like a taller version of this. All right. Well, that was worth a try. I'm for kids, it'll probably be okay. Yeah, the glass roof is nice. Hmm. But keep in mind, Tommy, I'm also a little. I don't know. I don't know if we can hear you with this mic. Yeah, keep in mind I'm six two, so I'm, I'm a little bit on the taller side. Uh, but in general, I like the styling. I like the infotainment. I like the power. I like the ride. Uh, is it worth sixty thousand? Is it better than a Tesla? You know, I would say if you're a Polestar and you want to lend us one for a week, uh, I can actually speak to that. Having just spent you know fifteen minutes behind the wheel, that wouldn't be fair to say. All right. Well, um, be sure to stay tuned. I'd like to do a range test to see if it's actually two hundred thirty miles because that's kind of my my big question is it actually going to be the uh, the rated range of 233 but um as always this has been tommy behind the camera and in front of the camera roman saying thank you for watching and remember check out tfl car for honest and independent pulsed r2 reviews see you guys next time ciao